Welcome to a short introduction of Sigma Cost Estimation. Please spend 13 minutes to learn how it works, what it can do for you, advancing from pen, paper, and spreadsheets to an easy and accurate way of estimating your projects. The video will take you through the most essential features and steps and get you right out to the point where you can continue on your own. Let me give you an overview. First, we will introduce Sigma's intuitive user interface. You will learn how to create content and structure the project, how to reuse parts from previously created estimates, and use the libraries and how you can use line items and complete assemblies. We will work with the sales prices and strategy, learn how to validate your work before you send it, and finally, how you can generate various PDF reports from the estimates. Let's start by looking at the powerful user interface of Sigma. Even though Sigma is a very feature-rich program, the user interface is very simple. On top, you will find ribbons like Home, Libraries, Reports, and in Home, you will find drop-down menus with all the functions you need. On the left-hand side, you will find the cost breakdown structure which you use to create the project, structure it, and maintain the big picture. You can easily open and close items to see what's inside. You can rearrange by dragging and dropping. On the right-hand side, you will find five pages. Content. This is where you add content and create the structure of the project. And summary. Resources. Insight and key figures, which will help you analyze and organize the entire project and understand the estimation better. We will get back to those in just a while. Let me show you how to create structure and add some content to our estimation. To build up the structure for our estimation, it is very easy just to point to something on the left hand side and type it in on the right hand side. So, you can see I am pointing to the production building, which consists of the construction site, shell, brickwork, carpentry, and steel constructions. So if you wanted to add roofing, I would just point here and type roofing. And you can see on the left-hand side, it is added to my estimation. I could point to roofing and add basic structure and surface. Again, on the left-hand side, you can see that the structure is created very easily and you can use as many levels as you like. I will now point to the basic structure and start adding rafters. Say this is a material. I will count it in pieces. I have got two buildings times 20 pieces at a cost of 500 per piece. Then I could add a carpenter and type it in 40 pieces by 2 hours. What you see is that everything is automatically added up. So my $23,528 is now the cost of my basic structure. If I point to my roofing, we can see that my basic structure now has a unit cost of that. Formulas are built into the program, so you can never type in the wrong cell and ruin anything. The program always knows that the quantity times the unit cost is actually what makes up the price. Basically, this is all you need to know to create your own projects in Sigma. You will learn how to speed up and add quality by using libraries, but you can always fall back and just use the basic features of Sigma. Let me show you how to reuse parts from previously generated estimates. This will save you time and improve quality by adding content that you have already built before. Since Sigma is a file-based system, all your projects are saved into files which you can send by mail or store in folders, just like the ones you are used to working with in the Microsoft Office programs. Let me show you how to open a previous project to reuse something. I go to File, press Open, and browse to the project that I wish to open. In this case, it's a parking building that I estimated some time ago. I just open it. What you see now is that the screen is split into two. So, on the top, I have my parking building, and down below, I have the production building that I am estimating right now. So, if I go to my parking building, I can just open up and find something I need, a cavity wall. I just drag and drop it, like this, to the walls in my production building. Now, 
what you will see is that if I open the wall section, you can see that the cavity wall is now included in the estimation. But I can also open the cavity wall and see all the parts, the mineral wool, the cardboards, and everything followed in the drag and drop operation. I can also do modifications to some of these line items if I want to adjust it to the project that I am estimating right now. We have now seen how to reuse data from previous projects. This is a good time to show you how to build up libraries and store historical data and reuse them in new libraries and share with others. So, let's assume that we wanted to put this wall into an assembly library. We would simply create a new library. Call it Assemblies, and what you see is a split screen where on top you have the library and below we have our estimation. The libraries work very much like the projects, so we can easily put up walls, roofing, and other sections in our library. And in walls, I can just do the same drag and drop operation. And that's it. I now have stored this cavity wall in my library. I can just save my library, close it, and very easily go to my library section and open it again. In this way, I can easily store more assemblies in my own libraries, reopen them, and use them for my estimations. A really easy way to reuse content from your libraries is to add them to the Quick List module in Sigma. By doing that, you can just be in your project estimation, start typing walls, and what we will see is suggestions from the libraries. Here we can find the wall again. I just hit Enter and put in how many square feet I need for this wall. So basically, it's very easy to reuse things and very fast to do that. And besides storing assemblies in your libraries, you can store resource lists, so you can easily just add a mason, punch in some hours, add some equipment like concrete, vibrator, etc. In that way, you can easily build up your cost estimations very accurately and very fast. Besides creating your own libraries, you also have the option to buy RS Means cost databases, which are very well integrated with Sigma. You will find them in the top ribbon if you have access to those. Please go to sigmaestimates.com to find more information on how to buy and install those databases. So far we have looked at how to create a structure and how to add content to our estimation. We typed in manually, reused from previous projects, and also used libraries to store and retrieve information. If you are working with both cost and sales prices, so far you only have the cost price, and now you have to work with the sales prices and the strategy for that. So far we have only worked with the contents page in Sigma. Now, to work with cost and sales prices, let's switch to the summary page. On this page, you will find a complete overview of the entire estimation. You see the first two levels, the unit quantities, the total cost price, and the total sales price. The difference between them is the margins. A very easy and efficient way to add margins to the cost price is to use the automatic cost margins calculator. You find it in the summary ribbon. If you enable that, you can add profit on category level like equipment, labor, materials, subcontractors, and other categories. Doing that, Sigma introduces a new column here called Auto Margins. Based on the input values you gave to the categories, Sigma analyzes all components and figures out what auto margins to add to that component. The result of this is that you get a suggested sales price, which we can see for all the components and as a grand total. Now, if you want to change this, let's say to 1.2 million, we just type it in and Sigma will automatically figure out where to put the additional profits based on a linear analysis of the entire cost estimate. And at all times, you can go to a component, enter a new value, and Sigma will handle whatever happens to that and all the subcomponents, show you the final results in both grand total and expected margins. You can never break a formula. It is just like working with a contents page. You add the information where you have some information. 
As an estimator, you know that figuring out the right price for a project is not that easy. You need to have a very good overview, be able to look at the resources, the unit prices, and make sure that everything is included in the project. Let me show you how to validate your estimation using some tools in Sigma that are very efficient in this regard. As you may remember from when we added content to our estimation, we added some rafters and called it materials in the category. Now Sigma uses this to group the estimation based on different categories and show in the resources page. Let's click on the resources page. Here you can see that the basic structure is now built up from labor and materials. If I click on the entire production building, I see the equipment, the labor, and the materials for the entire project. I see the total quantities. I see the average unit prices and the total cost. I can show a pie chart which gives me the distribution between those different kinds of resources. And I can also click on the different parts of the project, for example, the construction site, to see what is the distribution or what it lists required for this part of the project. The resources page is very basic and powerful to get an overview of the resources in your project. If you want to do more, you can go to the Insight page. The Insight page is an engine in Sigma that can reuse all the information already in the project to set up new views by grouping and filtering. You can use predefined views or you can set up your own. The examples here are in Operations page, where you can see all the basic operations, concrete operations, ground operations, you have a list of materials per main groups and you can also see which resources you are going to use for each operation. Equipment, labor, etc. for the concrete operations. Together with the key figures page, Sigma has a lot of powerful tools to help you better understand and analyze your estimation very easily. You just reuse the information already in the project and if you like, you can set up and configure those pages to suit your own needs or the company corporate standards. To help you present your estimations professionally, Sigma has a powerful PDF report generator, and with just a few clicks, you can use the build-in reports to set up your own corporate reports. To create a report in Sigma, you just go to Reports ribbon, find a report, click on it, and Sigma will ask you a few questions, depending on the report type, like insert a logo, customer accept, client information, intro to the letter, etc. And all you need to do to modify that information, click OK and Sigma will generate the report file for you in a PDF version, which you can directly send to the customer. Sigma comes with a number of build-in reports like different types of estimates. List of materials, task lists, internal reporting, tender materials, and it is very easy to use these reports to change and modify to your needs, add your own company logo, or create new reports. When you install Sigma, you can use a profile that could be contractor, architect, engineer, or general projects, and the profile will set up the project for you with the correct template. You can learn more about this at www.sigmaestimates.com. Thank you for watching.